I'm doing is I'm marking up the areas on these cases that I don't want the Teflon coating to be applied to. I'm going to have all these cases treated with a Teflon coating. It'll actually help the transmission run cooler and keep the oil more stabilized so it won't be flinging around and sticking to the insides of the cases. So I'm going to send all of these cases out, and then we're going to get them back, and they're going to look really nice and shiny and pretty. I'm going to do these cases in the silver coating and the covers in a black coating. So in this particular video, I'm going to go over how I prep these four-speed transmissions. Mainly in this video, it's a Super T10, but I also do the Muncie's like this as well. These are for class-specific racing that require synchronized rings. And I'll probably mention this a few times in the video. But what happens here is that when you are dealing with maybe some SCCA classes or in Europe, these FIA classes, they are very strict on rules that you have to use the original transmission that came in the car and you have to use synchronizers. In the States, sometimes you can get away with using a dog ring type of box, but you may get a weight penalty. So I try to build these transmissions using NASCAR technology. And by that, I mean I'll polish the gears and shot peen the gears and what they call rem finish the gears. And I'll also use a Teflon coating on the case to help keep the oil drag broken down. In other words, the oil is not gonna to cling to the gears and cling to the case and that's going to actually make the box run cooler. So these transmissions I build are, again, fully synchronized. They actually have no coolers, and they'll run for five or six hours at a clip with no issues at all. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is go over some quick, simple gear preparation. Now, the gear preparation, what I usually do is I start with a regular gear, and I might take the bores and clean them up with these tools. These are simple flap wheels. So I have different types of flap wheels for the bores of the gears. This cleans up a lot of the debris in the bores and some, a lot of times when you heat treat the gears, they're going to have a, a very rough finish on the inside of the bore where maybe the oil slots are. So what I'll do is I'll run these uh, kind of flap wheels through the bore to clean up the gears. These gears also have what's called a, a parkerized type coating on them. It's like a black oxide coating that can be very thick. That actually affects how the, tr the gear spins on the shaft. And eventually it wears in, but then it deposits a lot of junk in the transmission. So any of the street boxes I do and road racing boxes I do, these gears are prepped. And I start initially with using one of these flap wheels, and I'll go inside the bore and clean it up, and then I'll deburr the edges of the teeth. And then once that's done, that's like the first step. And then what I'll do is, after that's done, if I want to go even farther, I'll send the gears out and have them rim finished. So let me show you the three stages of what these gears look like. Okay, so here you have your basic gear. This is how it comes right out of the box. It's in pretty nice shape. A lot of times I'll go over and I'll just check to make sure that there's no little dings or dents in the teeth, which is very common when you get gears in. They always get banged up and there's nothing you can really do about that. I'll check the cones, make sure that there's no burrs on the cones, something that could hang the synchronizer ring up. I might pass a little 2000 grit paper on this just to clean it up, just to make sure that it feels good. But this is what the gear looks like. And in the bore, you can see it's got this kind of rough finish. Sometimes they really overcoat these gears. And the problem sometimes, I don't know if you can see it here, is there's an oil slot in the gear. And these oil slots, sometimes they get a little bit of a rough edge on them because during the heat treating process, this edge might grow a little bit. So these little edges can be very rough over here. So what I'll do is I'll pass that flap wheel through the bore and then deburr the edges. And so when I deburr the edges of the gear, the gear will come out looking like this. You can see that these edges are cleaned up now. And you can see the bore of the gear is nice and polished and shiny over here. That's a, it's almost like a honing process. So this really cleans up the, the gear. It really makes a difference on how it actually spins on the shaft when you're using a gear that's going to have a non-roller bearing. This is going to be running directly on the main shaft. Now, so the third process is rem finishing of the gears. The gear is sent out and, uh, through a company and they actually do this rem process where there's a video I have on this that shows you uh, different manufacturers and how they polish these teeth of these gears. And these gears are, are shot peened first and the shot peening process will reduce stress rises and prevent fractures of the teeth a little bit better than the conventional gear. And then the gears are sent out and then polished. So this also prevents oil from kind of sticking to the gear too much and it makes the gearbox run a little bit smoother and a little bit cooler. 
So that's basically the three processes. Now, now any box that I build, even for the street, this is how I prep the gear. This is a typical street prep, as opposed to just throwing in the gear right out of the box, which a lot of people do. So when I do a box, even for the street, it's going to be the bird and check for like sharp edges or things on the edges and chips on them. And then the bores are polished before they go in the transmission and the rings are fitted to the gear. So a few things I want to show you. One of the reasons why we actually use roller bearings underneath the gears, here's a modified Muncie four speed with a roller bearing underneath the gear instead of a solid bushing. So this gear is going to be freewheeling when it's not in gear like this. You see when you're actually in gear, the gear is actually locked to the main shaft. So if I put this second gear on the shaft here, when we're not in gear, it's always just spinning around like this. Okay. But when we are in gear, it's held stationary. So actually, it's when, again, it's not in gear that we can have a problem where it can weld itself to the main shaft. Now, on Muncie four speeds, I don't have all the gears on rollers like I do with the T10. So I have these shafts modified so they actually have oil slots in them. So I sell these main shafts with the oil slots in them to actually help circulate oil better. So they don't, I don't know if you could see this, so they don't burn up. A lot of times what happens is the oil will just puddle up over here and not be able to circulate around. So we have kind of slots on the front of the land here, but on the back we have no slots. So this actually helps. And I've been doing this for years like this with no issues at all. There's no need to go crazy. This works fine. So that's basically a Muncie main shaft. On a Super T10, all the gears are on rollers because the bores of the gears are actually smaller. So we're able to do that. So if, again, if I just look at this gear, the standard gear with this kind of rough bore and put it on a main shaft without any kind of work done to it at all, there's a high probability that it's going to seize up in high speed use. So I don't like doing that. So then, of course, if we're going to rem finish the gear like this one over here on the shaft with the oil slot, it's going to work pretty good. And then even better, if we can rollerize the gears with the rem finish, it's going to be a home run. It's pretty cool. So that's pretty much how I prep the gears and how they work on the main shafts. Now, pretty much standard procedure that on any of the street boxes, they all are going to get the bores polished and they're all going to get the edges deburred on the teeth of the gears. I think it's very important. It makes the box actually, at, you know, when you first get it, it's actually going to shift smoother and be able to rotate a lot freer. When you have these gears where they just kind of have this coating on it like this, they, they're kind of very rough and they don't spin as smooth on the main shafts, I find. So that's a little thing I do. These little flap wheels are available from any machine tool supply house. You can get them with the arbor. It's called, this is the arbor part. And you can get these with all sorts of different dimensions on the bores. There's several different types, like this one over here with these other types of flaps. I find that they all have a little different type of job that they work better. So I use them both and I end up with a really nice finish on, on the bores. I really like using these. So I got those parts. I'm gonna get from the T10. I'm gonna put them on the bench now. And let me show you how I kind of put that unit together and some of the little mods on that transmission. All right, so I got the cases back from being coated and I did the side cover in a black Teflon coating. Main case and extension housing are done in a silver Teflon coating. And I left the mid plate bare billet. I think that looks the best. It's going to look very good. There's actually a reason for these cases to be coated with Teflon, okay? And the reason is, is that we're using here some of the NASCAR technology in this transmission, but maintaining the use of synchronizer rings on the gears so it fits into a certain class specification that requires a synchronized box. So we can do some little tricks here and there, but we have to use, for example, a case that has this casting number on it. We have to use certain date codes like this. You see, <clears throat> but we can work around everything else. So this case, by the way, is a Super T10 case. It uses later Super T10 gears, but it's designed to use the Ford part numbers. Even the date code is 1965 on the case, but these are the rules. So we have to work around the rules. Now the Teflon coating, what it does is it allows oil not to cling to the inside walls of the case. So when you have a nice smooth finish on the gears, like this one over here, the oil will produce less drag in the case. 
the oil will not try to stick to the gear and stick to the case and try to pull itself apart, which creates heat. So by coating the cases internally and polishing these gears, we can actually reduce the amount of heat that's generated from the oil trying to pull itself apart. Now this particular transmission is going to have a rollerized main shaft. This is a special design main shaft by Rolltech and Rich McGear also makes one. And I've got it down here. It reduces the standard weight by 3.8 pounds. So we're going to be using this main shaft compared to say a factory main shaft, this one over here, that's the difference. Okay. So this is going to be full roller. All the gears are going to be running on roller bearings, these types of roller bearings. That's going to greatly reduce drag. The other thing that we've got is a light and reverse gear. This is your stock reverse gear and the lighting gear actually takes out about a pound of rotating mass. So that's pretty neat too. That's going to really help the shifting. <clears throat> I'm using these investment cast steel forks for the Super T10. We're working on a new fork design. So this will probably be the last time that I use this particular fork, but I've got a new design coming out that I think is going to be much better. So we've got also the clusters ready to go. Counter shafts in there holding the needles up. Again, everything is nicely rim finished. I'll send a link again below in the video description of where you can get your gears rim finished. The hubs are especially splined to work with this roller main shaft conversion. So you can actually buy this conversion if you're doing road racing and it'll come with the hubs, the roller bearings and the main shaft assembly. You can see how really light this is. It's actually rifle drilled from the back. So it goes all the way down, probably about here, I think. So that's what you got there. So let's look at this extension housing over here. I want to show you some of the modifications that are done to the rear seal area. Normal Super T10 seals use this really thin type seal. And instead we use a little bit thicker seal with a little bit more lip to it. See the difference? So the extension housing is machined to take a deeper seal in there. So the other thing is that these extension housings normally have a dowel pin that goes in here, this little dowel roll pin, and it holds this reverse idler shaft in place. And the problem is, is that through high speed use and vibration, this pin can actually drop down possibly and allow the shaft to rotate and come forward. So the extension housing is actually threaded and a little tiny standoff bolt is used like this to hold it in place. So it's machined to have this threaded bolt now that goes in there and then that will replace this little dowel pin so the pin can never fall out and the shaft can never drop out. The main case I've actually drilled and tapped this normal vent hole for a quarter inch pipe and the reason for that is is that a lot of racing fittings will go from an AN3 to AN6 line with a quarter inch pipe so if you're racing the car and you need to vent the case properly to a catch can, you're threaded and ready to go. But I use the bigger vents in the case rather than the plastic vents that are normally just pressed in. So it's got a solid vent that can't come out in racing. And of course you can remove this type of vent and put in an AN fitting type of line then with no issue at all. The front bearing retainer is a steel billet retainer and it's actually in the Ford form factor. It has the the OD for the Ford bell housing and the snout, this diameter here is for the Ford as well. Let's put it together. So I've got the first gear bearing race pressed on with the bearings in place so they get held in place like this. Now I'll put the first gear 
on here. And what I've done too is I make sure that everything is lubed up. The ring in place. Now there are gear sets for these that take dog rings as well. But again, this is class specific where the box needs to have a synchronized assembly to it. That feels good. This is gonna go on next. Perfect. It's looking good. These main shafts are kind of designed so that things go together fairly easy. But you still gotta press that one race in place. But these bearings kind of just drop down like that. Now we've got pretty good end play. That's what I'm looking for. And most of the small parts kits are going to have a selective fit of snap rings for the rear and for the main drive section. So you can actually fit them in here, see what you want, like that fits too tight. Usually the 87,000 snap rings work the best, which are the smallest of the bunch. That fits pretty good there. Let me mic it up. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, this is uh, 85, 86. And that fits perfect. Just want to make sure that this everything looks good. Now notice in the back of this particular unit I'm using a shielded bearing because I do want some oil to come through the back end of this and but I want it to protect against wind windage. So there we got our first and second speed gears on rollers already. It's looking pretty good, huh? Now third gear, same thing. It just kind of drops on here. I'm using this HVL assembly lube. Making sure that that's good and clean. Now, these main shafts, by the way, will retrofit any Super T10 gear set. So, it's really a nice little upgrade if you plan on doing some road racing. I wouldn't recommend it much for the street. That fits really nice. Feels good. What I'm doing is I'm catching the keys in the rings, these little three little keys. I'm going to catch them in the rings. Just tap it down gently. Now these kits give you a special snap ring for the three, four synchro assembly, and they're really tough to get on. You got to be careful not to overstretch them, okay? So if you got this far, I just want to thank you for watching the video. It really means a lot to me that you can possibly subscribe to my channel and hit the notification link. This way you'll see new videos pop up in your email when they are available. Uh, again, this particular video was just showing you how I do a couple of little tricks and tuning up the four speed transmissions that I use in these class specific races that require synchronized boxes. Years ago, you know, I went to some shows and saw some NASCAR transmissions and said, hey, you know what? Why not do this with a synchronized box? And I was actually the only guy to really do it on this level. 
and it really took off and that is a few other people building boxes like that so it's pretty cool now i want to just give you a, a little shameless plug here i've got two books this is my first book building and modifying high performance manual transmissions uh, from cartech books it's a pretty good book over 400 page color pictures by the way and 100 and i think uh, 45 pages of good knowledge on the basics of building manual transmissions in other words, how to do some of the basic operations like load needle bearings, check synchronizers, and the complete theory of manual transmissions, along with building five of the popular manual transmissions that I thought were popular anyway. The Borg Warner T10, Super T10, I think we've got the T5 5-speed, the world-class versions. I think several variations of the world-class 5-speed. Chrysler AA33 4-speed, the Muncie 4-speed, and the Top Loader 4-speed. I also dive into some clutches and shifter information in this book. Second book I got out on CarTech is the Muncie Force Speed book. This is strictly on Muncie's. It goes through the history of the transmission, casting numbers, and how to identify it in detail. Again, a bunch of different color pictures in this book here. Same thing, 400 plus pictures, around 144 pages. You can get these on Amazon from CarTech Books Direct. And if you would like an autograph version, you can go to my website and buy it. The link is in the show notes. So thanks for watching. Again, please subscribe. See you soon.